Do we have here tonight any second graders or children or adults who are preparing to receive their first Holy Communion sometime in the next coming weeks? If so, raise your hands. I see a lot of second graders. Moms and dads, thank you, thank you, thank you for bringing them to this Mass tonight. I remember when I received my first Holy Eucharist, I was in second grade in Grand Island, and our family was a founding family for a new parish, St. Leo's. And my class got to be the first class to receive Holy Communion as second graders in the church. Prior to that, we were worshiping in a public school auditorium. I remember getting ready for that, and I have a picture of the day. This was when our country was getting ready for the bicentennial celebration back in 1976. So we were almost 200 years old. So I remember the clothing that I wore, my pants were red, white, and blue stripes. My shirt was bright red, and I was so proud. I was ready to go. Getting ready for our first Eucharist, we, of course, celebrated our first reconciliation. Now, I'm a shy person by nature, and as a kid especially, I was incredibly shy having to talk to an adult other than mom or dad. So I knew how to examine my conscience, and I knew what sins I had, But to talk to Father one-on-one terrified me. I didn't know what to say. So the night of my first reconciliation, I was telling my mom that, and she could tell that I was nervous. So she got my older brother, John, and said, John, tell Jim what you say when you go to confession to give him an idea of how to do this. And my brother John said, sure. So Mom put us in a room, closed the door, and John went on to tell me all of his sins. I guess I heard my first confession, and even (laughs) as a second grader, God was getting me ready. Well, about an hour later, I went to church, and I went in to give my first confession, and I, of course, told the priest everything that my brother John had been doing. (laughs) He kind of led me to a place where I could talk about what I had been doing. What I remember from all of that is all of that was to get us ready to bring our very, very best to the Lord because we were about to receive the very, very best of our God, Jesus Christ in body and blood. And I remember knowing that. And so even as a family, at that time there were eight kids in the house and two more came later. It was important until we got to high school. Then mom and dad didn't have as much control. They dressed us up. We sat in the second row right here. We were taught to bring our very best when you come to church because you're about to meet the God who's giving you God's very best. I've had the pleasure of celebrating the Eucharist in some of the poorest parts of our world, the Pine Ridge Indian Reservation, Mexico, Guatemala, El Salvador, Tanzania, the West Bank in Palestine. And what I remember from all of those places, a Sunday Eucharist, these people who had nothing brought out the incredible best that they had. Not just clothing, but also their song, their demeanor, their food. Everything was the very best. And I remember in Africa talking with this family and saying, you're so poor and you don't have hardly anything. Why did you bring all of this to share with the community after the Mass? And they said to us, well, God gave us so much, we have to give something back to God. And we find that when we dress up, when we get ready, when we sing the best we can sing, and in Africa dance the best they could dance during Mass, they said somehow we are elevated. We become the best that we can be. Somehow God lifts us up and makes us more than we normally are. Because we receive Jesus, somehow we become him. So for a lot of my life, and I still think there's a proper way of coming to the Eucharist, bringing the very best you've got. But I have to tell you, in my almost 21 years as a priest, you, the people of God, have taught me another, more natural way to come to God. I have listened to you and walked with you and learned from you and mourned with you and prayed with you and anointed you. And it strikes me that To dress up and bring your best takes a lot of effort, and it's worth it. But maybe the most natural way that I come to God is not through my perfection, 
but through my imperfection. It's not through my beauty, but it's through the parts of me that are ugly. It's not through the parts of me that have everything put together. It is the part of me that is most broken. The most natural way, I believe, to come to God is through your own brokenness, through your own weakness, through your own awareness that you need a God who can somehow make you whole because something in my life is missing. The simple truth is there's a God and you're not him and I'm not him. We need this God desperately. And where did we learn this? We learned this through Jesus Christ who came all the way down and the gospel tonight bent down even lower on his knees and washed our feet. And then at the meal, he held up bread and he said, this is me. And then he broke it and he gave it. And then he held up wine and he said, this is my blood. And then he poured it out and he gave it away. He showed us, I think, the most natural way to come to God. So tonight, as we celebrate the institution of the Eucharist, I invite you to call to mind what's something in your life right now that is broken? What's some place in your life that has been wounded? Where is there some place where somebody hurt you? Somebody treated you unjustly, and you just can't get over that? Call to mind also someone in your life who is broken. Someone in your life who is hurting right now. Someone in your life who needs your love and a love greater than we have to be able to heal them and make them whole. And then call to mind one more thing if you're courageous enough. What is something in our world that is broken? What is something in our world that needs to be fixed? I think of terrorism and ISIS right away for me. I've heard many of you talk about politicians and issues and schools and different things that you want God to somehow to step in and do more for your children or family or whatever it might be. Take that brokenness in you, put it on the altar right now, Take the person in your life who is broken and needs God's help. Put them up here next to you. And then take something in our world that is broken and put it on the altar alongside you and the person you called to mind. Here we profess and proclaim the only power great enough to heal and to make whole all of that is the power of our God who tonight comes down again breaks himself open, gives himself freely, and says, I am the life life for the entire world. And you see, if you come to Mass in that way, and if you put on this altar the things in our world that are broken, what happens here? Our God then has the ability to heal you, to heal the people in your life that you love and know, and to transform our entire world. This Mass is important. The power that we invoke changes the world. I'll give my life for that power because that power gave his life to us. As we prepare for that, we are invited to do what he just told us to do in the gospel. Service. Go down on your knee in humility and serve somebody else. If you learn how to do that, then I think you're ready to enter into his brokenness and be made brand new. So as we move now to the foot washing...